Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curators, being brought to you in part by Once Came You pod- Podcast, the Massachusetts Lodge of Research, and the Masonic Historical Preservation Society. Uh, today, I want to, before we get into the episode of the artifact, we'd like to put a shout out to a, uh, Brother R.J. Johnson and the other brothers who have, over the years, put a number of uh, excellent videos on Masonic Curators. So when you do watch our videos on YouTube, please go back four or five years and watch some of the other ones. Also, we also want to thank Brother R.J. Johnson uh, for the uh, work that he did on establishing a Facebook page for us for Masonic Curators. So on top of YouTube, you can also find us now on Facebook, Masonic Curators. Now, a five to eight minute segment on a Masonic artifact or the history of a Masonic Lodge is not sometimes long enough to give you the full detail of the the artifact or the history. This will, the Facebook page will allow us to add on to that story. Uh, It will also give you, the viewer, an opportunity to chime in with perhaps a comment or a question. Uh, Also, it will have our email address uh, with the information, which is Masonic Preservation Society at gmail.com. So you can write in to us and ask us a question. Uh, if you have something that you don't know what it is, is it Masonic, is it non-Masonic, how old it is, etc., etc. So either viewing our YouTube channel, Masonic Curators, or the Facebook page, Masonic Curators, always make sure you give us a thumbs up. With that, Our first item today, being brought to you uh, from the beautiful building here in Clinton, Massachusetts. I feel right at home here in Trinity Lodge. Uh, Trinity Lodge dates back to 1778, and you're going to hear more about the history uh, from the presiding district deputy grandmaster in another episode coming up. But this is a really old lodge, and I'm very happy to be here today. As such, I brought to you an item that has just as much history uh, that we sometimes don't really as collectors or sellers or purchasers of Masonic items even look at sometimes as an item to collect and that is stereo view cards. Now a stereo view card is also called a stereograph which was first produced around the 1850s. Now you gotta remember photography was still young in the 1850s it being actually invented in 1838, but the process dates back to the 1820s. Now, stereo view cards were an image of an object that was placed on a divided card. The image, as you can see, is an exact copy of the other. Now, these were put into a device called a stereoscope for viewing. Early stereo view cards were placed on glass slides, as we call also glass negatives. Later, they were put on albium paper and then put on a heavy stock material, which you can see here in the back. Now, the stereoscope was a simple device, usually handheld. I had a wooden handle with sort of a glass visor that you could look into. Uh, had some sort of a shaft mechanism with some sort of a holder in the back that the cards would then fit into. Now for those, perhaps of us of that age, or maybe even a little younger than me, may remember the old Viewmasters that we had as kids. And you remember those, those were the little plastic things that we held to our eyes and came in red or blue or brown colors and they had a little level on the side and You put a a disc at the top that had a bunch of little pictures on the side, and you look through it, and it gave you sort of a 3D illusion of the photograph. The stereo view card also did the the same thing. Now, most of these were done in black and white, but I have also seen colorized versions. These were very popular from 1870 to about the 1920s. Now, Placing the card in the stereoscope and then looking through the viewmaster or the, the viewing screen by adjusting the card forwards or backwards, 
it would bring the card into focus and also bring into more depth the 3D illusion uh, of the photograph. Now, these cards came in a number of topics. Um, I have seen them for hunting, I have seen them for places, historical places, objects, events, military buildings, people. I've seen them colorized, I've seen black and white and colorized comic strips. I've even seen the dead put on a stereo view card. But one topic that is kind of hard to find and that is Masonic. And I have brought three of them here today to show you. The most popular of the Masonic stereo view cards are two. One, which is the Grand Lodge of Philadelphia. Uh, it's, it's a exterior shot done about the 1870s, 1880s. And then the other one is the Grand Lodge building here in Boston, Massachusetts that stood from 1867 to about uh, 1895. And that was taken around 1870s, 1880s. Those are the two most popular Masonic topics that you will find. But you will find others. You'll find some shrine events. Uh, you'll find some Masonic interior shots, uh, which are very, very hard to find. Uh, you find portraits of Freemasons, portraits of uh, Knight Templars, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so today I have brought to you three cards that came uh, or show the interior view of the Melrose, Massachusetts Masonic Temple. Now this first card is showing the east and this is probably around 1870s. Uh, there is no date. How's that okay? 1870s. Um, this shows what the building looked like relatively just after she opened. Now, Melrose is um, kind of unusual because it is the oldest active, continually used building built specifically for Masonic purposes here in the state of Massachusetts, meaning it was built in 1867 and it was built primarily for the fraternity. Now, we've had other buildings, or we still do have other lodges, meaning in buildings that are much older than that. But the building first didn't start off as Masonic, or the lodges have moved out and then later have moved back in. Uh, as with Melrose, the lodges have never moved out. Uh, it's been active ever since 1867. And so this view here shows the east, the beautiful canopy, which is very typical of many of the early periods, uh, period time of those uh, lodge rooms, as well as the two murals that are on either side, and hopefully you can make it out. If not, we will have photographs of this once this video gets posted on the Facebook uh, page. Now, what's unusual about this card is this is when I consider when Freemasonry was king, at least here in Massachusetts. Many of that time period Masonic rooms from the 1860s to 1880s were similar to this. Beautiful canopies in the east, either made out of wood or some with um, cloth material uh, canopy, uh, beautiful plush carpeting, extremely ornate furniture, huge gas chandeliers, uh, beautiful pipe organs, um, ornate plaster or wood uh, decorations on the ceilings and on the walls, and then also, uh, in many cases, hand-painted or hand-stenciled murals that could be from five to six feet in length and could be up to 10 to 15 feet tall. As you can see here in this card, east, uh, on the left and right of the east, is the... Um, point within a circle and unfortunately without my eyeglasses I can't make out what the other emblem is but this is the west of Melrose and what's unusual about this is that the painting that is behind the back of the senior warden's chair seems to me to be the destruction of the first temple and we only talk about the destruction of the first temple in the royal arch degree 
So I believe this was done because of the Royal Arch chapter that was there in Melrose at the time. And the only other car that I have, I've only had three of the four views that I presume were taken, shows the North. And this is the organ. Now, what's nice about these cards is that it shows a time period of not only uh, Melrose uh, Masonic history, but that of basically, as I mentioned, early Massachusetts large room history. Um, it is believed that these murals um, are still there uh, today in the building. But over time, Melrose has undergone a number of renovations, both on the interior and exterior. Uh, the exterior you would not recognize at all today. The interior, they actually added a second floor and then also put up decorative molding uh, wooden panels uh, on the large room, floor, uh, large room walls. And what I've been told is that uh, with this work that was done, the murals are still there today, but have been encapsulated. So these cards are an excellent piece of history. It's a window into the past, and hopefully one day these cards will be returned back to the Melrose Masonic Temple for their collection. The other thing about these cards is that a number of companies and individuals made them. And as you can read in the back, this was done by the uh, local photographer in Melrose, R.J. Shute. And I've seen a couple of his um, stereo view cards online for sale. And not only did locals, but also companies made them. There was a couple that came from Germany, similar to having postcards done. Um, they were done by major companies and or individuals. With that, I hope you enjoyed this segment, segment of Masonic Curators. If you like what you've seen, give us a thumbs up and thank you.